Hello, hello. We had a really big content update today, so this is going to be a little bit of a long video, but let's go ahead and get started. So as you guys can see, um, you'll notice something is missing. We actually don't have the end turn button anymore. So what I've done is I've taken the end turn button, and because we created something and we're going to get rid of it because it didn't really make sense, um, we're just going to go ahead and uncheck this box. The reason why I don't outright delete it is because maybe in the future I might want it back. And if that's the case, uh, you don't want to delete it. You can just disable it and that takes it out of the game as well. So I've disabled the end turn button. It's no longer a part of our scene. Um, I have created a new empty here and I call it the middle pile empty. And then I actually took the horizontal layout master if you're paying attention to the scene in the background. Um, the horizontal layout master has actually been moved so that it's centered towards the bottom. Um, whenever I anchored it, I just anchored it down here instead of in the middle. So I made a couple of small UI changes and I wanna show you what that actually does for the game because um, it makes a big difference. We now have all of the cards in our hand laid out here at the bottom. And then just like before, um, we can hit that button and it'll do something. If I look at my debug menu, all the debug statements are going through. And then when I press three, check out what happens. It says you need to choose a card. So that's new because before it would just automatically send a card to the middle pile. And what we've changed about the game is we now gave the player the ability to click and tell it which card we want to send forward, which card we want to play, in other words. So I could very well click the five and then, okay, so good, terminated. That was like a demug message that said I've chosen five. And then I can press three. Oops, click the five, press three, and then play the five. Okay, there we go. So that's uh, something pretty cool you can do. And then um, I would have to keep clicking to go through the other players. That's temporarily gonna change. Eventually what it's gonna look like is um, it'll automatically play the other three with AI. But for right now, we have something pretty cool here. We can actually choose which card we wanna play whenever it's our turn. Uh, the other thing that has happened is now if it is not our turn, uh, we can't play extra cards. And then also um, we can only play one card per turn. So those are the main changes that were made here. Um, so that way you don't just like click end turn and then skip to this guy's turn and then you know go back and forth. It's gonna play one card per turn and only during our turns. And then we can select which card we wanna play. So pretty big changes. Let's get into the script and what everything looks like. You'll notice in the project folder, I now have two scripts. So there was one big change. We created a second script and that is the card info script. It doesn't have a whole lot in it, but I'm gonna open it up just to show you guys um, what it looks like. In the card info script, there's a couple of big differences, starting with we are using Unity Engine.Event systems. Anytime you want to do click information, on user interface, that'd be like images, text, stuff like that. Um, you can't just use on mouse down. On mouse down is great for rigid bodies, stuff with um, colliders, but it's not good for your user interface stuff. So since our cards are UI, they're user interface, we have to use the event systems. And what we wanna add to the top of the script, this goes in a, a different place from what we're used to. It's right next to mono behavior, you put a comma, and then you add these four things. I pointer enter handler, I pointer exit, I pointer down, and I pointer up. And what these will do is uh, the enter will be anytime the mouse enters a UI element, the exit will be anytime a mouse exits a UI element. Down and up will be when you click down or um, when you let go of the mouse. Uh, we've created a couple of variables. We've created the card variable for uh, the card we're about to select, and then a game object variable for the game object holding that card. So what we're gonna do with the script is basically just attach it to our prefab. So if I go into the prefabs folder and then look at my card prefab, it now has a card info script. And basically it's, it's just gonna grab the card class from the card that I select. So um, in our script, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the enter and exit handlers and the down and up handlers to do different things. When we enter a card, what we wanna do is we wanna get that game object. So uh, we'll just say selected object is this one. And then when we exit a card, we wanna say, okay, it's no longer selected. And the reason why we do this is there are many cards in the scene at one given time, and we wanna only be using one script at a time. 
So if we enter and then we kind of fill in this value, um, we can then use that as a condition later to see if the script is actually supposed to call anything. So then uh, in on pointer down, that'd be like when we click the mouse, if we have selected the game object, great, that means we've entered and we haven't exited yet. That's what we want. And so if we've selected the game object, then we're gonna do something. And that prevents multiple scripts from running these lines all at the same time. It makes it so only one script runs that line. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, uh, choose card, that's a function that's new. So uh, we'll talk about that next. And uh, we'll feed in the card variable that's assigned to our card info script. So again, I'll, I'll talk about why that hasn't been assigned um, in a little bit. And then we do a debug, and once you've done this and you know it works, you could just like get rid of that. It's not really necessary. Same thing with the on pointer up and the other debugs. We don't need these, so you'll notice I've already commented those out. These are just for checking to see if your script is actually working, and then after that, you don't need them. You can get rid of them. All right, let's take a look at some of the changes in the deck of cards script. And there have been a lot of changes, so I marked them all. I'm gonna use the control F to find them. I called them new stuff. And so I put comments in my script anytime there's something new, um, starting with in our variables section. So we're up here at the top where the variables are. Some of the new things are we created a bool can end, a bool has chosen, um, a transform middle pile empty, and then a card chosen card. And um, basically, since we got rid of the end turn button, we want to have a bool to keep track of that. So that's what the can end will be for. Um, has chosen will tell us if we've actually chosen a card yet and that'll send a debug statement if we haven't. Transform middle pile empty this will be the pile in the middle where the cards go and then uh, chosen card this one is going to be like the card that we're ready to put down. All right so more new stuff this time we are in the modified show card function. So we're going to have to make a slight change to the modified show card function, and it mostly happens at the bottom. When we would assign the text value to our cards, so I'm going to hit play and just kind of show you what's going on. When we assign these text values, the text value doesn't hold a card class piece of information. So if you wanted to get the card class from the text, that's just kind of like extra work. You're going to have to convert again. It's more thinking. So what would be easier for us is to just put a script like the card info, they'll have the card class. But unfortunately, since these cards are being generated and destroyed and generated and destroyed and every time they're different time, they're different cards possibly, um, it doesn't know which card it is. So we have to give it that value. And the best time to do that is when you show the card, when we create that new instantiation of the card. So what we'll do is we'll just say card info, that's the class that's gonna be on this new prefab, right? Um, give it a name, CI for short, is a component of the newest prefab. So we're just going to do get component card info. And then within card info, remember we created a variable for the card, a card type variable. So we can just say CI.card equals C. And C was the card that we're showing right now. So that was the change that we made to modified show card. Remember at the bottom, it's you just added two lines, card info, CI equals newest prefab, get component card info and then ci.card equals c. So the next thing that we made a change to is this completely new function. I added the, the comment like way too close. Um, this new function right over here, oops, I gotta get out of this selection. Control F and get it to work again. Bear with me for a moment. So this new function, choose card, it's a, actually a pretty simple card and we're gonna pass in a card type variable c. So in the beginning, we're gonna say chosen card equals C. And chosen card is the variable in this script, which we have added. It's a card type variable. So the very first thing is we wanna you know, keep track of what our card is. So we save it in the script. And then the second thing we do is we're gonna loop through our current player's hand and see if that player has the chosen card. If that player has the chosen card, so if C is the same as any of the cards in their hand, then what we want to do is we want to set our current card index to that place in their hand. And this will let us delete that card from their hand and then um, remake their hand without that card. That's what this loop is for. 
And then the last thing we do is uh, we're going to set that value of has chosen to be true. So that way we know we're ready to play a card. And if they press the play button, it will allow um, the play button to run through. Okay, we're at about 10 minutes. I'm going to try and get this done in the next few minutes or so. All right, next new thing that we changed is in the end turn function. It's really, really simple, the change that we actually made. Um, we just added this part right here, has chosen equals false. That's the only change that we made. And the reason why you have to do that is because after this person ends their turn, we have to set this to false to make sure that the next person has selected a card. So once the next person selects a card, then we can set it back to true and then go through their turn and it'll set it back to false again for the next person. So every time you want it to be false, um, when the person's turn starts, that way they can select the card and then play it. Now you'll notice I have some stuff in comments which you probably don't have. And the reason why I put this in here is to just show you uh, what some of your options could be like. You can make this um, a condition and then check if can end is true before you actually do the end turn because maybe you don't want them to be able to end their turn without playing a card. But the reason why you don't need to do this is because if you check if they've chosen a card first, then it'll you know automatically end the turn after they've chosen a card. Or the other thing you can do is um, if they're only playing one card per turn, you could just end it as soon as they play a card. So there are different ways you can go about that logic, but basically you want to check in some way, have they played a card? Are they ready to end their turn? All right. The next change we made is in the update function. So this one has to do with when they press the button. Um, if they're ready to play a card, that means has chosen should be true. So what we'll do is where we put the if statement, you want to put if input get key down alpha three, and then inside of that if statement, you want to put if has chosen. So this will actually check right over here. It'll check if they've um, chosen a card, if they've selected something. So that way they don't accidentally play like a card that they didn't mean to. Otherwise they could press that button and accidentally play something. And then inside of here, we're just gonna do the, the play card part. That line was already there. And then another thing that you wanna include in there is end turn. So after they play, then immediately end their turn. Okay, it's the reason why we don't have to include the if can end we can just immediately end their turn right there because they've already played something. Um, again, you don't need the if can end if you just check if they're ready to play. Um, a reason why you would want the if can end is maybe they're playing a game like Hearthstone or some other trading card game. In that case, you would want to have another condition to check if they're ready to end yet. Okay, so what we have here is we have an if statement enclosing play card and end turn, and then you close the if statement. And the reason why we put the if statement inside of the other condition here is we also want to have an else. So let's say they press three, but they're not uh, ready to play a card yet. They haven't chosen one. Then what you want to do is you want to send a debug statement. You want to say, okay, you need to choose a card. And in the future, we're going to change this to a text message UI instead so that the player can see it as well. Right now, we can only see that debug statement in the console. So if I hit play and I'm not ready to choose a card, it's gonna say you need to choose a card, but notice how the player did not get that message. So in the future, we are gonna change it to a text. All right, I know that was a lot, but those are all the changes um, that we made recently. So hopefully that will kind of like get your game going. Um, we're almost, almost there. It's starting to look like a game actually. Further steps, we need to implement some artificial intelligence, get these three people to play with us. So that will also require us to make the rules for our game. And then we're probably gonna wanna put a little more UI design so that it kind of has like a picture here and it feels more like we're actually playing against three other people rather than playing against ourselves. We're running at about 14 minutes. Thanks for watching this video. I know this was a longer video, but um, they were some big changes and we needed to make those. Make sure you add um, in the user interface, you just click on Canvas, right click, create an empty, and then call that the middle pile empty. Uh, we're still gonna use our horizontal layout master. If you go to the deck manager script, you can just drag your middle pile empty over here, and that will take the transform and assign it for you. And um, last but not least, remember, disable your end button and then go to your prefabs and on that prefab once you create the card info script make sure you drag the card info script right over here onto your prefab so one way you can do that is you just double click on that click on your assets folder 
very carefully, and then you can drag the card info script older, over. Sorry. All right, that's it. Um, I'm done talking. See you guys next time.